Hello again, Steve Fentress with the Strassenburg Planetarium at the Rochester Museum and Science Center. And with the Hurley and Behnken mission going up, we thought about the, the stars as astronauts see them. But first, the stars as they appear to us on our rotating planet Earth. If we watch for several hours, we see stars rise in the east. We see them set in the west. And if we face north, we can look for the familiar stars of the Big Dipper or Drinking Gourd, follow the last two stars to Polaris, which stays in almost exactly the same place in our sky, because that is where the axis of Earth's rotation points. Something else to remember. This is later in the summer, in the morning, when Orion returns. See the three stars of Orion's belt there, next to that blue line. That is the equator of the Earth, or the equator of the sky. And keep this in mind, the belt stars of Orion, as seen from Earth, always rise or set one, two, three, one at a time, as seen from Earth. But here's a real photograph from the space station of Orion's belt rising, and notice the three stars are flat with the horizon. There's no place on Earth you can go to see Orion rise like that. So the shape of the constellation is the same as seen from the space station, but the angle at which it rises is different. And to visualize that, here's a cool website you can look at, Celestrack. It's all about Earth orbiting satellites, and you can fiddle with it and boil it down to the International Space Station. There's Orion and Orion's belt in the background there. And when I look at the space station's orbit from this viewpoint, I can imagine myself riding on the station, and as I go over the horizon of the Earth, into or out of the region where I can see Orion's belt, I can see that I'm gonna be seeing that belt rising or setting flat on the horizon at least at this time of year. And our planetarium software, Evans and Sutherland Digistar, showing more or less the same situation. Riding alongside the space station, just as it comes over the hill, so to speak, to see Orion's stars coming up. The constellation is upside down, and there are those three belt stars rising almost flat with the horizon. The International Space Station goes around the Earth about every 93 minutes, so Orion would rise or set uh, and set every 93 minutes. So is there a North Star as seen from the space station? Well, we would want to find the space station's axis of rotation. As the space station goes around the Earth every 93 minutes, it is made to rotate in the opposite direction every 93 minutes, so its Earth-observing windows always face down. So to see where the North Star, so to speak, might be, let's use Celestrack to get the orbit of the space station flat in the plane of the computer screen and then look right through that plane and see what stars we're looking at. Look, the bright W stars of the constellation Cassiopeia the north pole of the space station's orbit, more or less, so to speak, is under the W of Cassiopeia, and if we check a star chart, we find the constellations there are Perseus and Andromeda. Here's the Evans and Sutherland Digistar version of the same scene. Look at the center of the screen, just a little to the left and a little bit above for the W of Cassiopeia, and the constellations around which everything seems to be re uh, going are Perseus and Andromeda. Well, here's a real photograph taken by astronaut Christina Koch on her recent visit to the space station. Thunderstorms and city lights going by below and star trails up above. Astronaut Don Pettit on his tours of duty on the space station took many beautiful photographs of star trails. So the space station is going around the Earth every 93 minutes, so almost all the motion you see in these photographs is due to the motion of the station itself, not the rotation of the Earth, which is much, much slower. Earth rotation, 24 hours, space station orbit, 93 minutes, a little more than an hour and a half. Here's a real movie taken from the space station. Watch for city lights and lightning and thunderstorms going by below us. 
as we go around our planet every hour and a half. But the space station is made to rotate in the opposite direction every 93 minutes to keep the windows pointing down. And that means the sky above seems to rotate in the opposite direction every 93 minutes. So the angle at which stars rise and set is determined by the orientation of your orbit around the Earth. And if you're going to have a North Star while you're in orbit, well, that's only because your little world, your space station, is rotating and the axis of the station's rotation determines where your North Star, as seen from orbit, will be. What about what astronauts see from the moon? Well, here's a photograph from Apollo 11. The sky is black with no stars. It's black because there's no atmosphere to diffuse the sun's light or scatter the sun's light. No stars because on the moon, the sunshine is as bright as, as it is here on Earth. And we are looking at white, white suits and shiny metal surfaces. And our eyes or our cameras must adjust to those very bright things. And when they do so, they cannot see, our eyes and our cameras cannot see something as faint as a star. So the Apollo photographs do show the Earth in the sky, but from the surface of the moon, no stars. To see more about that, we're using our Evans & Sutherland Digistar software to park ourselves at one place on the moon. So we're sitting on the surface of the moon, watching time go by. There's the sun setting, and we have orange sticks for the constellations, in case you can't see the little dots for the stars. The moon rotates every two weeks, roughly. So on the moon, if you stayed in one place on the surface, you would see the sun and the stars rise and set in a two-week cycle. But the same face of the moon, roughly, always faces the Earth, so you would see the Earth stay in the same place in your sky. So from a future moon base, the Earth will always be in the same place in the sky, but the sun and stars will rise and set in a cycle that takes two weeks. What about the moon's north star? Well, here we are facing north. Look right in the center. There's the Little Dipper. And curving around below it, that's the constellation Draco. And there are several kind of medium faint stars in Draco that could serve more or less as a north star. Here's the star Aldeba, also known as Zeta Draconis. And it or several other similar stars near it could be north stars, but they're not very distinctive. So if you're on the moon, you don't have a great north star. There are several faint ones in Draco that sort of work. Suppose you're an astronaut going to Mars. What do the stars look like then? Well, you'd be following in a path similar to that followed by our space probes so far. Here's the InSight probe back in August of 2018 when it was about halfway on its journey from Earth to Mars. And as we look around in the sky with the NASA's Eyes software, the familiar constellations are all out there and they look about the same. But there's the Sun and Earth and Moon. Let's turn on the orbits, which you would not see in the real sky, only with computer software. And the reason we're doing that is that we can back away from the InSight spacecraft on its way from Earth to Mars, as future astronauts may be. And we can see that even if you get quite far from Earth or Mars, far enough to see the whole inner solar system, the constellations out there in the distance look the same. The distances to the stars are so enormous that only if you travel many light years away from our solar system do you start to see a change.
So those are stars as astronauts see them in the present and the future. We look forward to doing things like this with you under the dome just as soon as we can make that happen. In the meantime, we enjoy having you with us here online.